Hi everyone, good morning. Okay, 4S1, 4S6. So are you ready for the lesson today? And uh, today we are going to enter chapter 7, which is the cellular respiration. So once you are here, once you are on board, please type your name in the chat box as the attendance. Come on, hurry up everyone. Okay, so remember to type your name in the chat box as attendance. Okay, let's see who is now with me. Okay, good morning, Bunshen. Good morning, Wen, uh, Paul. Good morning, Lai Ziyang. Oh, three of you from 4S is very punctual. And then Shi Jian, good morning. Yi Kang, hello, morning. Li Zhui, who is Li Zhui? I guess you are Li Ziyang from 4S, right? Okay, Chong Shao Qian, good morning. I will monitor of 4S1, Cha Yi Kang, Yap Chi Kit, Lam Chin Kang, Man Hong, Jun Hao, Wing Shan, Rong Shen, good morning. Dick Man, Yao Ming, good morning. Xin Kai, Hong Liang. Chiu Jun Xian, Wei Kit, wow, today Wei Kit, you are very punctual for the lesson. Usually you are late to the lesson. Dan Jia Xuan, Kam Jian Jun, Eng Shi Hong, good morning, Chao Jun K, and Si Ang Zi Yu and Calvin Eng. Hey, our class start at 11. The time now is already 11.01. Okay, and our the audience accumulated is only 24. Hey, for our class, we have two classes, 4S1 and 4S6. All together should be 68. 68 now for 24 only. Okay, hurry up. Okay. So I will start the lesson at 12.05 sharp. I will not wait for the others, okay? So after MCO, okay, after staying at home for more than two months, I think, everyone getting very lazy. And 4S6, okay, some students still owe me your homework. Please submit your homework. Okay, I, give, I, I have extended uh, the due date. Okay, Ho Chi. Okay, good morning. Anthony, Calvin, and good morning. And Liu Chi Le, finally you are early. Okay, but still late, two minutes late. Okay, the rest while waiting for the rest. Okay, so boys, uh, yesterday I have shared a PDF file to your group chat, right? So please, okay, you should do it before the lesson. Please draw the diagram in your long book, okay? While waiting, while waiting for the others, okay, so not right now. You can do it, okay, we still have two minutes time for you to draw the diagram. It's a very simple outline, okay? So this is just the outline, very simple, very simple outline. So you just take around two minutes to draw the diagram in your long book because for today's lesson, we are going to study about the cellular respiration, and this diagram may help you to remember, to memorize, to study the cellular respiration. Okay, so now let's see the viewers. We have 47 students on board. Okay, Bua Kai Ben, good morning. You are late, Liu Junwei, good morning. Ong Ding Chao, good morning. Re Rong, good morning. Okay, hurry up, hurry up. You still have two minutes. Okay, so as promised, okay, when I showed you this link, if you be energetic to learn, okay, I will show my crew card. I will show my crew card. And the condition is that it's a T and C, uh, terms and condition. If the viewer here, the number of viewers exceed 50, exceed 50, I will remove my cap. Otherwise, you can't see my crew card, okay? So if the viewers, number of viewers here exceed 50, I will remove my cap and please like this video uh, wait, as a support to me because I need to have a big courage to have this crew cut. So please give me a like for this video. If fifth more as it's 50 likes, uh, if it's 50 likes, then I will remove my cap. So, okay, come on. So the time now is 11.04. Hey, the number of viewers still remain as 28, 29. Hey, our number of students should be 58, 58, uh, sorry, 68, okay, 68. Uh. So while waiting for the others, come on, boys, please get ready with your long book and draw the diagram in your handout, this diagram. Okay, so as I told you, 
if the number of viewers here exceed 50, I will only remove my cap, okay? Or else I will not show you my crew card, okay? So please ask your friends to join the class, wake them up, and please, if the number of likes here also exceed 50, okay, wait, 13 only, now 13, come on, come on, come on, come on, give some support. Okay, so the time now is 11.05. Okay, I will start my lesson very soon. Okay, have you taken your bean, I know, dinner. have you taken your breakfast? Sir? Remember to take your breakfast, okay, because we need energy. The source of energy is from your glucose. Okay, so good morning, J1, good morning, Reza, good morning, JNG, good morning, Tong Hua. Okay, the time now is 11.06. Uh, as I told you, to see my crew cut, okay, please like the video, and the number of viewers must exceed 50, which means I need your attendance, it's very important now. Uh. Okay, so let's start our lesson right now. Okay, remember to ask your friend, pick them up to join the class. Actually, we stopped for one week. Last week, I just gave you the uh, assignment, okay, the own research. Okay, you need to do your own research without seeing my face. Okay, so actually, you rested for two weeks. So be energetic to learn, okay, be proactive, be independent to learn. Okay, now I'm going to share my powerpoint okay so the number of viewers for today's lesson is already 37 huh? once hit 50 once hit 50 and the number of likes of this video hits 50 i will remove my tab and show you my crew cut okay and for you guys okay 4s1 and 4s6 4s1 and 4s6 for those who own owe me homework okay especially the four essays uh, i want you to accept the challenge crew cut challenge so once after school reopen i want to see every one of you four s1 especially the four essays uh, for those who owe me homework have your crew cut as the punishment okay uh, so please take accept this crew cut challenge okay the number of viewers still remain as 36 37 okay so as i said if the number of viewers exceed 50 50 i will show you my crew cut okay so for today's lesson we enter chapter seven which is cellular restoration okay for students to remember when we were in chapter five we talked about metabolism and enzymes right so metabolism there are two types of metabolism we have catabolism and anabolism and cellular respiration which is the topic to be discussed today it's a kind of catabolism so from its term catabolism cat means breakdown so for cellular respiration it involves breakdown of chemical substances okay or a large more a larger complex molecule into a smaller substance and for catabolism in in it involves the release of chemical energy okay so let's see for cell, okay, for respiration, it can be divided into two types. Okay, the first one, which is the external respiration. Okay, so for this external respiration, it is a mechanical process. So from this term, mechanical, it involves inhalation and exhalation. This is a mechanical process. And this mechanical process involves the gaseous exchange. So the gases here are referred to the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. Okay, when we see this term exchange, exchange means between two systems. So these two systems are referred to the respiratory organs and the external environment. Okay, so breathing is an external respiration. So we have external for sure, we have another one which is the internal respiration okay so we see another type of respiration okay. internal respiration also known as the cellular respiration and this is the topic to be discussed today okay and uh, if compared with the 
external cellulation, okay, uh, respiration, sorry. External respiration is a mechanical process. It involves inhalation and exhalation. But for internal respiration, okay, this is a biochemical process, which means it involves chemical reaction, chemical changes, okay? And see, and it involves the breakdown of organic molecules. So for cellular respiration, the organic molecule here is referred to as glucose. So glucose is the main reactant for cellular respiration, okay? So, and what are the products that are broken into simpler products with the release of energy? And the energy is the main product of cellular respiration. This is what we need to obtain. Okay, so from this term, energy, Relate to today's topic, okay? So to learn, please, to be energetic. To be energetic, you need cellular respiration. So if you be energetic to learn, and I will show my crew card. So let's check the number of viewers. Hey, the total number of students for two classes should be 68. Hey, now it's still 38. Come on, come on. If the number of viewers, number of audience exceed 50, I promise I will remove my tab and show you my crew card for target. Okay, and every one of you, please accept this challenge. Okay, so let's check who is the latest on board. We have Ryan Chin with us. Okay, Tian Pang, Henry Chong, Zhu Yik Sun. Hey, don't just sign up and then you leave the channel. Huh? Initially, the number of num number of viewers, okay, just now I checked, the highest is 41, 41. Now it's reduced to 36. Don't shit me, ah! Uh. Don't just here to give the att to write the attendance and then you off the YouTube. Please stay with me for one and a half hours for the lesson. Just one week, once only. So call your back, come back, call, call your friends, come back to the lesson. Okay? Yes, the number of viewers here already increased to forty. So this number of viewers uh, include the outsiders, uh, okay, and also give me a like as a support, okay, as a support me to cut this crew cut, okay, so please like this video, okay, let's continue. So internal respiration or cellular respiration, okay, and it's pro okay, uh, it involves the breakdown of what uh, of organic molecules into simpler products, right, with the release of energy, okay. So for today's lesson, okay, I will bring Superman, yes, my camera, Superman to teach you about the cellular respiration, okay? So, can we start now? First of all, why energy is needed? Okay, we need cellular respiration because we need to obtain energy. But why energy is needed? Okay, let's see. So, I, I, I'm going to introduce, okay, or to explain some examples of the uh, reasons of the energy requirement. The first one would be the sperm movement, okay? So, in the mid piece of the sperm contains a lot of mitochondria. And this mitochondria is a set of cellular respiration, right? Okay, to, for the production of energy so that the sperm can propel to the fallopian tube for fertilization. Okay, so sperm cell needs energy for its movement. But if the sperm move in this way, this is an abnormal sperm. So make sure your sperm will not rotate in this pattern, okay? So next, also energy is also needed for active transport, okay? And this topic uh, we studied before MCO, before China, uh, before the school holiday. Okay, so active transport is a movement of substances across the plasma membrane against the concentration gradient, which means the substances are moved from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration. So active transport, active transport energy is needed. Okay, let's check. Hey, the number of viewers here still remain as 41. I said if break 50, I will remove my cap. Okay, so please ask your friend to join the class for the lesson. Okay, next reason, why do we need energy? It, it is for the muscle contraction. And we know that the muscle cell contains, okay, high density of mitochondria for the contractions of muscle. 
And next, for Cell Division Galaxy, this direct the Superman is delivering the pizza. So, what is the relationship between pizza and cellular and cell division? Okay, so we recall back, okay, the topic in chapter five, the topic in chapter five, we studied one phase, okay, uh, before the mitosis, before meiosis. Let's remember, yes, this pizza actually is the interface. Okay, and G2 phase, G2 phase, the cell accumulates energy for cell division. And therefore, energy is needed for mitosis, meiosis. Okay, so this is the interface, just resembles the pizza. Okay, next would be the maintain of body temperature. Okay, so we need heat energy to maintain body temperature, especially for those who stay in the cold climate. Okay, and next one would be the transition of nerve impulse from one neuron to another neuron. Okay, let's say, so this Superman, okay, like I said, Superman is a nerve impulse. If this nerve, if this Superman wishes to transmit from one place to another place, which means from one neuron to another neuron, so it involves energy as well. Okay, so these are the reasons why do we need energy and why cellular respiration is important. Okay, so the number of viewers already exceed 43 according to my form. So we have seven, need, need, need more seven audience that I will remove my cap and make sure to like the video as a support. Okay, so next, come back to our lesson. Okay, so why energy is needed? I think I here I'm going to make a summary regarding to the reasons of why do we need energy? Okay, first one is for sperm movement, right? Sperm movement. Followed by, okay, can please recall back everyone, recall back. Okay, recall back to what I introduced just now. Why do we need energy? The first one for sperm movement. The second one, which is the active transport, okay, movement of substances across the plasma membrane, okay, and against the concentration gradient. Followed by, okay, muscle contraction, okay, cell division, and this cell division uh, refer to the mitosis and meiosis, right? Okay, and it also needs energy to maintain body temperature, maintain body temperature. And last but not least, we need energy for the transmission of nerve impulse. Okay, so, so okay, Mr. Tan here gives you a way to memorize this in a very easy way, a very convenient way. Okay, so let's see the first letter, S-A-M-M-N-T-T. -T. Wait, what's that? Yes, we are all some that students, some that. So some that boys are very energetic. So we need energy for spur movement, active transport, muscle compression, mitosis, meiosis, to maintain body temperature and the transmission of nerve impulse. So can you please remember this? Some tech. Okay, next. The energy produced through cellular respiration, okay, must be stored, okay? And the storage of energy is in the form of adenosine triphosphate, adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP. Okay, if you ask me, sir, can you, I can me, can I just write ATP to represent adenosine triphosphate because this name is too long. Yes, you may, you can go ahead. ATP is accepted. And this is a sales energy currency. Okay, so here I have one question for you to think about it. Before proceed to the next slide, okay, I will give you the answer, but I will not wait until the end of the lesson. I just want you to spend around one or two minutes to think about this question. So why energy is not stored in the cell? It's not stored in the cell. But instead of that, we need adenosine triphosphate, triphosphate, okay, ATP to store energy. So why a cell cannot uh, store energy, okay? But instead of that, we need ATP, okay? So now you we just imagine ATP, okay? So sorry, energy is just like the money, the cash, okay? In order to increase, okay, the value of money. So what should we do? Increase the value of money. 
usually okay, for those days, uh, okay, many years ago, people you save the money in the bank. Hey, but if save the money in the bank, the interest is very low, right? So nowadays, people will spend the money for investment, a lot of investment, okay, for property investment, okay, for buying stock, okay, buying a lot of uh, products, okay. So in order to increase the value, so now we just imagine that I just made an analogy. The energy here is referred to as the money, the cash. And now, okay, we do not st uh, store or keep the money at home, right? Okay, we use the money for investment. So ATP here is in the form of investment. Okay, I just used this to make an analogy. So actually, what is ATP? Okay, let's see this diagram. Okay, so this is the structure of a molecule. Okay, let, please recall back, recall back, okay, okay, what we studied previously in the previous chapter. So this structure refer to what molecule? So please type the answer in the chat box, in the chat box right now. Come on, please type the answer in the chat box right now. What this uh, molecule represents, okay? So now, come on, the viewers here, the number of viewers still remain as 42, as I said. If the number of viewers exceed, okay, exceed 50, hit 50, I will remove my cap and show you my crew card. Okay, come on, please give your answer. Okay, we recall that for when you see this diagram, okay, you relate this diagram to what molecule? Come on. Yes, nucleotide, thank you, Jian Jun. Okay, it is a nucleotide, right. Okay, so for ATP, its structure, actually, it's similar to the nucleotide. Okay, let's see. A nucleotide contains a phosphate group, right? Okay, and it also contains a pentose sugar, pentose sugar. And this pentose sugar, which is can be the ribose or the deoxyribose. So, but for ATP, the pentose sugar here is referred to the ribose sugar. And the blue color here represents the nitrogenous base. But for ATP, Okay, the nitrogenous base is specific, okay, which is adenine. And therefore, it is given and it is given a name adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so for ribose sugar and adenine collectively, collectively, they are named as adenosine. Ribose, okay, the yellow color one, and the blue color one, adenine. Collectively, they are named as adenosine. So Adenosine settled already. How about triphosphate? Triphosphate, it consists of three phosphate groups. Okay, so for here, there is only one phosphate. So I need to add another one and the third one. So this is the structure of an ATP, which consists of three phosphate groups, a ribose sugar and an adenine. And the ribose and adenine are collectively known as adenosine. Okay, so just now I asked you the question, why? Okay, a cell cannot store only energy, the form of heat energy or chemical energy, but this energy must be converted to ATP. Okay, now I tell you the reason, let's say, if there is no storage as ATP, if our cell just accumulates the energy okay, in the form of chemical energy or heat energy. So this can destroy our cell. Why? Okay, as this energy, okay, let's say, is this energy is the heat energy. So this heat energy may increase the temperature of the cell, right? And then this will denature the protein, denature the enzymes in the cell and eventually destroy the cell. And therefore, the energy must be converted in another form, which is the ATP. Got it? Okay, let's check. Hey, just now when I check the audience, the viewers, number of viewers, it's already hit 46. You need four more audience. According to my phone, I'm now still 43. You need seven. Come on. Work out for the lesson. Okay, let's see. How ATP is formed? So this ATP is formed by the energy produced, okay, the energy produced from the cellular respiration, and this energy will bind the free phosphate group to ADP. Okay, so ADP, D means to die, adenosine diphosphate. Okay, 
And this energy produced from cellular respiration will bind this phosphate, okay, the free phosphate group to ADP to form ATP. So this is how energy is converted to ATP. So how about this case? When energy is needed, okay, let's say, when the sperm needs energy to propel itself to the fallopian tube for fertilization. So where this energy comes from? Yes, it's from ATP. So the ATP molecule is broken down into energy, phosphate, the in inorganic phosphate group and ADP. Actually, this is a reverse reaction. Okay, ATP, this molecule is very unstable. Okay, let's see why it is unstable. It's due to the bond, the bond between two phosphate groups. The bond is very weak and unstable. So why they are unstable? Okay, phosphate P, okay, according to your chemistry, we studied about phosphate ion PO43 negative. It is negatively charged. So you just imagine when two particles with negative charges come near to each other. So this will create a repulsion, okay, a repulsion between the negative charges. So because of this repulsion, it causes the ATP to become unstable and the bond is weak and therefore ATP is broken down readily when energy is needed. Okay, let's see. When energy is needed, okay, so ATP is broken down to form phosphate group ATP and last but not least is the energy. Okay, so down the number of viewers is 44. We still have six more. Okay, six. Uh, okay, come on, next one. Okay, next part. Okay, there are two types of cellular respiration. The first one, which is the aerobic respiration. So for aerobic respiration, the aerobic, okay, we will relate air to AIR, air. The air consists of oxygen, right? So this oxygen for cell aerobic respiration, it needs oxygen, it needs oxygen. But let's say if the sources of oxygen is limited, okay, the sources of oxygen is limited or there is an absence of oxygen, absence of oxygen. So a cell will carry out an aerobic respiration. This is an alternative pathway because of limited sources of oxygen. Okay, so for anaerobic respiration, it is also known as fermentation. Fermentation. And fermentation can be divided into two types: the alcohol fermentation and the lactic acid fermentation. So this name is given. Okay, alcohol fermentation and the lactic acid fermentation is due to the product's form. For alcohol fermentation, its product is alcohol, and lactic acid fermentation, its product is lactic acid. Okay, is it clear? So, before moving to the next part, let's do a brief summary for the first lot of lesson. For respiration, it can be divided into two main types, the external respiration and the internal respiration, which is also known as the cellular respiration. Okay. For cellular respiration, it can be divided into two types. In the presence of oxygen, a cell will carry out aerobic respiration. If there is an absence of oxygen or limited sources of oxygen, so a cell will carry out an aerobic respiration. And it is also known as fermentation. And anaerobic respiration can be divided into alcohol and lactic acid fermentation. Okay, so the number of viewers here is already 47. We need three more viewers and I'll show my crew card. Okay, so now I'm going to go, I'm going to the second slot of this lesson. Okay, I will focus more on the anaerobic respiration. So as we know, for respiration, glucose okay, is the main reactant. Right, okay, this is the organic molecule, and glucose is broken down completely. Okay, boys, so please jot down, jot down, and also set in your mind. Okay, so for aerobic respiration, glucose is the main reactant, and it is broken down completely. And for aerobic respiration, we need an oxygen, right? So oxygen is one of, is also one of the condition. 
for aerobic respiration. And the products are carbon dioxide and water. These are the simpler molecule. And last but not least, energy is the main product of respiration. Okay, let's see. This is the equation that represents aerobic respiration. But this is an imbalanced equation. Okay, boys, let's do a task, okay, while waiting for the others to join us. Okay, I know some of our friends, they wake up very late. Okay, so please change this habit. Do not wake up late. Okay, please join the lesson. Now the number of audience already exceed to 48. Okay, come on. While waiting for the others to join, please balance this equation. This equation is not balanced. Okay, glucose C6H12O6, oxygen, O2, carbon dioxide and water and the energy. Okay, the total energy produced is 2,898 kilojoule of energy. Okay, come on, please balance this equation. If anyone can give type the equation, write the equation correctly in the chat box. Okay, I will show you my hair. Come on, come on, come on. Please balance this equation and type in the chat box right now. Okay, so need to balance the equation okay, by adding the coefficient in front of the substances. Okay? So this equation is not balanced. So please type a balanced equation in the chat box. Okay, if your answer is correct, okay, I will show you my crew card. Actually now, at 48 viewers, we still need two viewers. Come on. Hey, once you join the class, please do not leave. I know you can play this video, you can replay this video, you can refine this video anytime. But okay, you come to school to learn is to learn is, is to have some good habits, okay, which is to be punctual, okay, follow everyone at the same time. Because now we talked about teamwork, okay. Sir time, okay, Ham Shui Me and you, 4S1 and 4S6, we are all in a team. So please come to the lesson at the same time. No one is left behind. Okay, so come on. So please type this equation, balance this equation, and type it in the chat box. Type it in the chat box. Okay, I know the line. The connection is quite weak. Okay, let's check this from Henry. Okay, glucose C6H12O6 plus 6. Ox A. Hey, 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 wrong, 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 wrong. Sorry. Henry, I can't help you. Hey, this is an aerobic respiration. We need oxygen as the reactor. We do not need water as the reactor. No, incorrect. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Come on. Okay, six molecule of carbon dioxide is produced. Okay, 602, right? Okay, so we balance the equation. We start from the most complex one, okay? C6H12O6. So we start from C, okay? We balance the number of C carbon atom first. Okay, 6C, not 6C, yeah? Okay, and then 12H, okay, 12H. So 6 times 2, 12. Okay, so this is the correct answer. So please balance this chemical equation. Okay, so since everyone, so since Henry give the correct answer and I need to, okay, I do not want to break the, my promise, I'm going to show my crew card right now, okay? So come on, let's continue with the lesson. And actually, the number of students should be exit 50, yeah? but I, now I do not want to wait for the others because study is important, okay? I don't, we don't wait for the others, okay? Now, let's go to the next part. Okay, so for aerobic respiration, it can be divided into two stages. Hey, after seeing my crew card, don't leave the classroom. Uh, continue stay here until the end of the lesson. Hey, and otherwise, I cut this hairstyle while not worth it. Uh. Okay, everyone to see that everyone gone already, gone already. Okay, so for aerobic respiration, it can be divided into two stages. Okay, the first stage is known as a glycolysis, and it takes place in the cytoplasm. Whereas the second stage is known as the oxidation of pyruvate. Okay, so this pyruvate is the product of glycolysis. Okay, later I will discuss this in detail. Okay, and oxidation of pyruvate takes place in the mitochondria. Okay, so boys, for aerobic respiration, there are two sets, not only in the mitochondria, but also in the cytoplasm as well. Okay, so now I will focus one by one start from the glycolysis so from this name glycolysis glycol here means glucose and lysis here means breakdown so which means in this stage it involves the breakdown 
kind of glucose molecule and it takes place in the cytoplasm. So by referring to this diagram, okay, even though there are mitochondria, but I do not involve them, okay? So a glucose molecule, okay, which is a six carbon sugar, it is broken down into two substances, two same substances, which are the pyruvate. There are two pyruvates, okay, are produced and each pyruvate is a three carbon sugar and these are the products. Okay, and last but not least, in glycolysis, two ATP, two ATP are produced, okay? So, for boys, okay, for our aerobic respiration, it is divided into two parts, the glycolysis and the oxidation of pyruvate. So just for glycolysis itself, okay, energy is produced only, but the number of energy or the total number of energy is less, which is also, which is equivalent to two ATPs only, very less. Okay, so this is how the glucose is broken down into pyruvate. Okay, so this. On the left hand side is the molecule, is a structural uh, formula of the glucose, which consists of six carbon atoms. On the right hand side, which is a pyruvate, which consists of three carbon atoms. So there are two pyruvates, which are the products of glycolysis. And the energy, which is equivalent to two ATPs. Okay, after um, this glycolysis, okay, it is followed by the oxidation of pyruvate. This is the second stage of aerobic respiration. Okay, so the pyruvate produced, okay, initially it is formed in the cytoplasm, right? Because for the first stage, which is glycolysis, takes place in the cytoplasm. Okay, and now the pyruvate will enter the mitochondria for the second stage, okay, which is the oxidation of pyruvate. And in this case, oxygen is needed. Okay, we see this name, oxidation. So which means oxida oxygen is needed for this stage. And the product is carbon dioxide, water, and energy. And the amount of energy is equivalent to 36 molecules of ATP. Okay, now, before proceeding to the next part, okay, I would like to make a brief summary regarding to aerobic respiration. The first stage, which is, okay, let's tell me the answer, even though I cannot listen to your voice, okay, but you just shout it, okay, the first stage is what lets your parents know, ah, my boy, my son now is studying, uh. okay, so the first stage is known as the glycolysis. So for glycolysis, it takes place in the, yes, cytoplasm, and how many ATPs are produced? Yes, two ATP. Okay, whereas on the other hand, oxidation of pyruvate, oxidation of pyruvate. So it takes place in the, in the orange color one, which is, yes, mitochondria, and the total number of energy produced is 36 ATP. Okay, so which means all together, two ATP plus 36 ATP total, 38 ATP are produced. Okay, next. Okay, let's say in the situation of limited sources of oxygen or in the absence of oxygen, okay, let's say really no oxygen, the cell still needs energy. But if the cell does not undergo aerobic respiration, instead of that, the cell will carry out anaerobic respiration and it is also known as the fermentation. Okay, so in the absence of oxygen, okay, the pyruvate cannot be oxidized. So which means the pyruvate cannot proceed to the second stage. Okay, so the pyruvate will carry out fermentation instead of oxidation of pyruvate because there is no oxygen. So the pyruvate cannot enter the mitochondria. So fermentation occurs in the cytoplasm as well. Okay, so let's see. Next part, the next slot of this lesson, I'm going to focus on the end aerobic respiration. Okay, and this respiration occurs in the absence of oxygen, which means no oxygen, or when the sources of oxygen is limited. Okay, so as we know, for respiration, glucose is the main reactant, right? 
And however, this glucose is broken down in complete. It is incomplete breakdown because of the absence of oxygen. Okay, so there is no oxygen is involved. And the products are alcohol. Okay, I use all because for anaerobic respiration, there are two types. Okay, one which is the alcohol fermentation, another one which is the lactic acid fermentation. There are two different products. And the main product should be energy. Okay, so I focus on the first type of fermentation, which is known as the alcohol fermentation. Okay, and this is the chemical equation to represent the alcohol fermentation. So the glucose in C6H12 O6 is broken down into C2H5OH. And this is a type of alcohol. To be specific, it is an ethanol. And 210 kilojoule of heat is yielded, and which is equivalent to 2 ATP. Okay, boys, this equation is in, uh, in balance. Please balance this equation. Come on, let's, let's do this task. Okay, don't just listen. Okay, listening to my lesson, this is just an input. Uh, if an efficient learning, we need input, okay, we need processing in your brain, and we also need output, okay? So you have input, which means the lesson from me. You are processing, you are thinking, but you lack of output, let's do have an output right now. So balance this equation, okay? We start from the most complex one, C6H12O6, okay? So how to balance the equation? Come on, how to balance the equation? Okay, let's, it's very easy, okay? So six carbon atoms, okay, to be easier, convenient to you, we balance the number of atom of hydrogen first, hydrogen element. So on the left-hand side, there are 12 hydrogen atoms, okay? So on the right-hand side, carbon dioxide does not have hydrogen, so we just can ignore this carbon dioxide. We mainly focus on C2H5O6, okay? In ethanol, there are six hydrogen atoms, right? So to be balanced, left and right times two. So both sides left and right there are 12 hydrogen atoms okay so now followed by carbon atoms and oxygen atoms so this is the correct answer two mole of c2h5oh and two mole of co2 this is the core uh, complete and balanced equation for alcohol fermentation okay but so for okay Okay, alcohol fermentation, okay, examples of cell that carry out alcohol fermentation. Okay, the first example in the yeast cells. So this yeast cell contains an enzyme which is known as a Z-mase. Z-mase is an enzyme produced by the yeast cell. And this enzyme helps in the breakdown of alcohol of glucose into alcohol. Okay, another type of cell that carry out alcohol fermentation are the root cells of the paddy plants. Okay, and these paddy plants, they contain an enzyme which is named as alcohol dehydrogenase. Okay, alcohol dehydrogenase, this enzyme is to remove the alcohol. Okay, later I will explain more detailed about the function of alcohol dehydrogenase. Okay, so now I will proceed to the next slide. Okay, so since you know that this uh, yeast cell carry out alcohol fermentation, and what is the application of yeast in daily uh, daily life? Okay, the first one we can use yeast for brewing of alcohol. Okay, let's say if yeast is added to barley, okay, and this barley is a source of uh, carbohydrate. Okay, because for fermentation for respiration, the main reactant is Carbohydrate is glucose and barley, this is a very good source of glucose. Okay, yeast is added to barley and is to produce what kind of alcoholic drink, which is beer. Okay, so let's say if during this MCO, I'm not going to, I'm not going to encourage you to drink beer. Okay, we use science, okay, we apply the knowledge of science, okay, for industry, okay, for daily usage, okay, you can learn to brew alcohol. Okay, by using this added to barley. Okay, uh, for next lesson, okay, next week I will show you 
this video okay, regarding to the brewing of alcohol at home. Okay, but I'm not going to I'm not encourage you to drink alcohol. Okay, so let's say yeast. If yeast is added to grape juice, so we can use to make wine. So this is the application of yeast in brewing of alcohol in the al uh, alcohol industry. So next, yeast also can be used in the uh, bakery industry, okay, in brick making, okay, we use yeast. It's added to the dough, okay. So this dough, as we know, one of the product of uh, alcohol fermentation is carbon dioxide, not, on, not only produce alcohol, but carbon dioxide is also one of the products. So this carbon dioxide will rise up the dough, okay, rise up the dough and the dough will become expanded. Okay, why expanded? The dot now, the dot now is become very airy. Okay, because inside the dot contains carbon dioxide. So the bread, okay, produce, the bun produce will be very soft, very airy. Okay, so next part, I will move to another example of uh, organisms that carry out uh, alcohol fermentation, which is the paddy plants. Okay. So if anyone have the experience, okay, if you visited any paddy plants before, you have the experience, you know that the paddy plants, okay, they are planted in a water lock condition. Okay. If you have visited Kedah, the paddy plant in Kedah, or the, uh, the paddy field in uh, Sakinchang, you should know. Okay. So because uh, whole year, okay, most of the time, the plants, okay, the, especially the root, okay, they are planted in a water lock condition. So due to this situation, the root cells, the paddy plant root cells, there are lack of oxygen, which means the root cell cannot carry out aerobic respirations okay, in a normal way. Because lack of oxygen, they will carry out okay, anaerobic respiration for the root cells of the paddy plants. Okay, so for this aerobic respiration, the product is alcohol. And this alcohol to the paddy plants is very toxic because alcohol can cause the stunted growth of paddy plants. The paddy plants cannot grow normally, healthily. So in order to remove this toxic alcohol, paddy plants produces a kind of enzyme, which is known as, okay, just now I've introduced, which is the alcohol dehydrogenase, alcohol dehydrogenase to remove, <coughs> sorry, to remove the alcohol, which is toxic to the plant. Okay, so next, after discussing the alcohol fermentation, I would enter another type of fermentation, and this is still under uh, anaerobic respiration, okay, which is the lactic acid fermentation, and the product is lactic acid. Okay, let's see. So this is the equation okay, for lactic acid fermentation. So C6H12O6 is a formula of glucose and C3H6O3 is the formula of lactic acid. Actually, it's very easy. It's just half, right? So to balance this equation, okay, you need to add two in front of lactic acid. And 150 kilojoule of energy is produced. And this 150 kilojoule of energy is also equivalent to ATP. Okay, so remember, for everything happened in the cytoplasm, okay, which is the glycolysis, the number of molecules of ATP produced in glycolysis is two ATP. So which means for lactic acid fermentation or even for alcohol fermentation, the number of ATP produced is two ATP when one molecule of glucose is broken down. Okay, so similar to the alcohol fermentation, okay, there are two, okay, I, I introduced two examples. Same for the lactic acid fermentation, I will introduce two examples of cells that carry out this type of anaerobic respiration. So the first type, which is the lactose bacillus. Okay, lactose, lactose bacillus, not lactose, sorry, lactose bacillus. Lactose here actually we refer to lactose. Okay, because this uh, bacillus, okay, or this bacteria, they will produce lactic acid. Okay, they will act on the lactose. And bacillus, bacillus here, this name is given because based on the shape of the bacteria, it is a road-like shape, like a road. Okay, so this uh, the second examples, okay, 
which is the human muscle cell. Okay, that's why I asked you to draw the diagram before the lesson because I will use a very simple way to teach you on how to memorize, how to remember the lactic acid fermentation in the human muscle cells. This is very important. Okay, first I will focus on the making of lactobacillus. Okay, and lactobacillus is used in the making of yogurt. Okay, that's it. If you have if yogurt is a is your favorite food, so you can try this at home. It's very easy. So as long as you buy this bacterial, okay, and how to get this bacterial? Okay, you can go to the pharmacy, okay, because now the pharmacies are operating. Go to the pharmacy and ask, hey, I want to buy probiotic. Probiotic actually are the good bacteria needed for you for your healthy. Uh, digestive system so you can buy from them okay i want a probiotic so this probiotic contains okay many strands different strands of um bacterial include the lactobacillus okay next you add this lactobacillus in heated milk okay milk is the raw material of the yogurt okay and why do we need to heat the milk there are two reasons the first reason because of heating the milk the high temperature will denature the milk protein okay this is the first reason you need to heat the milk and the second reason is to uh, sterilize the milk okay to kill to destroy the pathogens okay the harmful microorganisms in the milk okay so after adding this uh lactobacillus okay the bacteria into the heated milk so this mixture are incubated at a temperature of 46 to 4, 43 to 46 degrees Celsius. Okay, let's see. Incubated. Incubated here means we need to keep this mixture, okay, which means the bacteria and the heated milk in a water bath. Okay, water bath, and the temperature of the water bath is maintained at 43 to 46 degrees Celsius, okay, for couples of hours. And to form yogurt, okay. So you can try to make this yogurt at home because we need to apply what we study in biology in our daily life. Okay, so in the next lesson, I will share you some videos okay, regarding to the cooking recipe okay, of making yogurt. So once after school reopen, please bring your own yogurt to school and share with your friends. Okay, so this is just the process. But when it comes to the biochemical reaction, so now we see about the chemical reaction. The lactobacillus will act on the lactose in the milk. Okay, lactose, which is a kind of milk sugar. Okay, do you still remember lactose is a disaccharide? Okay, SML we have sucrose, maltose, lactose, disaccharide. Okay, and this lactose is broken down, is hydrolyzed into glucose and galactose. Actually, this lactobacillus is act on the glucose, okay, act on the lactose, and this glucose, okay, will carry out uh, fermentation, okay. So I repeat, uh, lactose bacillus will act on the lactose, so the lactose, okay, will hydrolyze into glucose and galactose, and this glucose will carry out, okay, fermentation to produce lactic acid. Okay. And this lactic acid will give sour taste to the yogurt. Okay, This is the one reason why yogurt tastes sour. And the second function of lactic acid is to convert the milk protein. Okay, boys. And this milk protein, I will introduce briefly. Okay, I will uh, explain briefly when we enter the digestive system later. Okay, casein. Casein, which is a kind of uh, insoluble milk protein. Okay. And this insoluble milk protein will be converted into the texture of yogurt to become more solid texture. So this process is known as a coagulation. So the lactic acid, function of lactic acid is to coagulate the casein, which is the milk protein, into yogurt. It gives yogurt a solid, uh, uh, very solid texture, okay? But it's not very too solid, lah, okay? But as long as it's not a liquid texture. Okay, so next one. Okay, I will go to the last part of this uh, fermentation or the anaerobic respiration. Okay, because why? Uh, this diagram is very important to us because it's very related to us. We are all human. Okay, we need to do exercise, vigorous exercise. Okay, so during this MCO, we already rested for two, 
not rested lah. You stay at home for two months, up to two months already. So do you do any exercise at home, basketball? I'm sure you have, there is no any outdoor activities, but no worries, no worries. So at the end of this lesson, I will teach you on how to do a very efficient exercise at home to burn your fat, to build up your muscle. And it involves this fermentation, this application of lactic acid fermentation. Okay, no fatigue, no tiredness, but very efficient. Okay, but before moving to the next part, let's see. Sometimes if we carry out vigorous activity, right, we will feel very tired. Okay, we have muscle cramp, suan tong, ji ro suan tong. In Chinese, we see this as ji ro suan tong. Why? So because our muscle cell carry out and aerobic respiration in this case. Okay, so let's see this diagram. Okay, we know that during the end of vigorous activity, okay, the heartbeat rate increases, the breathing rate increases in order to transport oxygenated blood to our muscle cell. However, okay, the rate of the rate of oxygen supply, okay, by the circulatory system is lower than that okay than the oxygen used by the muscle which means the supply is less than the demand okay the muscle now okay the muscle cells now require a lot of oxygen to carry out respiration to produce energy but in this case okay the supply is very slow so for to initiate okay and aerobic respiration there must be a reason okay the oxygen supply, okay, the rate of oxygen supply by the circulatory system is lower than that, the rate of used, uh, the, of the rate of oxygen used by the muscle cell. Okay, so next one. And therefore, because of the low rate of water oxygen supply, now the oxygen, the muscle now is in a state of oxygen deficiency because of lack of oxygen. Okay, in this case, the ox, the muscle cell is in the stage of, in the state of oxygen depth, or also known as the oxygen deficit, not enough oxygen. Not enough oxygen, then what will happen? So the muscle cell now will carry out an aerobic respiration instead of the aerobic respiration because of lack of oxygen. Okay, so next part. For an aerobic respiration, the glucose will be broken down, okay, incomplete this is the incomplete breakdown of glucose into lactic acid and 150 kilojoule of energy is produced and the energy total energy or amount of energy produced is less than that of the aerobic respiration okay Next. because of the accumulation of lactic acid in the muscle this can cause muscle cramp and even cause fatigue, tiredness after a vigorous activity. So I, I'm very sure every one of you experienced this, this before, especially okay, after a vigorous activity, after our football match, after your latte han rumasukan, or after your basketball practice. Okay, So why fatigue, why muscle cramp? Due to the accumulation of lactic acid. So <coughs> now, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Okay, so after the vigorous activity, during the recovery states, recovery states, so we will inhale more oxygen. Okay, right? Because you are very tired, you keep inhaling oxygen. Okay, why in this case you inhale more oxygen during the recovery state? Because this oxygen is needed to remove the lactic acid. Okay, because this lactic acid can cause tired, tiredness, lactic acid can cause muscle cramp. So we need to remove this lactic acid. How? By inhaling more oxygen. And this lactic acid will be oxidized in the liver. So number eight, this diagram is the liver. The lactic acid will be oxidized okay, in the liver into carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Okay, and therefore, the lactic acid are removed. And lastly, in this case, we call this as oxygen that is repaid, which means initially, okay, uh, we owe the muscle, okay, we owe the muscle oxygen, right? 
okay, because of the muscle cannot carry out any aerobic respiration, we owe them the oxygen. Now we pay back the oxygen to the muscle. Okay, so this oxygen debt is repaid. So these are the nine steps regarding to the lactic acid fermentation. Okay, so actually the slide is over, but this is not the end of the lesson. Okay, please give me another uh, half an hour because our class, I promise our class will stop at 12.30. I just spent your time around one and a half hour you do. Okay, so now please take out your long bow. Okay, boys, please take out your long bow with this diagram on your long bow. Okay, let's see. Okay, so there are nine stages, right? Okay, so for anaerobic respiration, why a muscle cell carry out anaerobic respiration? It is due to the rate of oxygen supply by the rest uh, by, by the circulatory system is lower than that okay of the rate required by the muscle cell okay for cellular respiration okay so the first one okay, according to this diagram the step one we start from here so step one number one so the rate okay So, rate of oxygen supply by the circulatory system is lower than that of the rate of oxygen used by the muscle cell. Okay, which means supply is less than demand in this case. So, second, in this case, number two. The muscle cell is in the state of oxygen deficiency. So the muscle cell is in the state of oxygen deficiency. Okay, and which means the muscle cell now is in the state of oxygen depth. Oxygen depth. Okay, next one. Number three. If let's say if lack of oxygen, now the muscle cell number three will carry out an aerobic respiration. Okay, just remember previously. Okay, just now I show you there are nine stages, right? Nine stages. So I want you to divide these nine stages into three parts, into three parts, okay? So the first part, there are three stages, okay? There are three stages. Why anaerobic respiration takes place? That is a reason, okay? Because of rate of oxygen supply by the circulatory system is lower than that of the rate of oxygen used in the muscle cell. And therefore, the muscle is in the state of oxygen deficiency, oxygen deficiency, and it is called oxygen debt. Okay, oxygen debt means oh, uh, the ox we owe the oxygen. Uh, the oxygen is lacking of ox. Uh, sorry, the muscle lack of oxygen. That means zai wu hu da qian qian. Okay, so qian oxygen. Now. Number three, anaerobic, therefore the muscle will carry out anaerobic respiration. So this is the first three steps. So next one, for anaerobic respiration, what are the products? Okay, number four, I'm right here. You see? Okay, I write up a bit. Okay, and therefore, glucose will be broken down partially or the incompletely into lactic acid. 
Okay, number four, glucose is broken down partially or incompletely into lactic acid. And number five, 100 and kilojoule of energy is yielded. 150 kilojoule of energy is yielded or is produced. Okay, next one. So this lactic acid, what is the effect of lactic acid? So the lactic acid can cause muscle cramp. Okay. So in this side, you draw a lightning symbol to represent muscle cramp. Okay, accumulation of lactic acid causes muscle cramp or fatigue or tiredness. Okay. So can I see this? Okay, so the first stage, the first stage, there are three processes. The one, the reason why the muscle carry out anaerobic respiration because of the rate of oxygen supply. The second muscle cell is in the state of oxygen deficiency, and this state is known as the oxygen death. Three, the muscle cell will carry out anaerobic respiration. So the first three. So the next one would be during the anaerobic respiration, what will happen? Okay, so the glucose will be broken down partially into lactic acid stage uh, step five, step four, and step five, 150 kilojoule of energy is produced, and the accumulation of lactic acid can cause muscle cramp. Step six. Okay, so. You remember these eight steps, okay? Stages by stage by stage. Stage one, three steps. Stage two, three steps. And followed by the last stage. So last stage is during the recovery. Recovery means after the exercise, what will happen? So during the recovery, a person will inhale during recovery. So you inhale more oxygen. A person will inhale. Oh, sorry, you can't see it. It's okay. I lower. Sorry. Okay, number seven. During recovery. So a person will inhale more oxygen. This is for second, the third stage. Each stage there are seven uh, three stage uh, three steps. Okay, next one. So what is the reason of inhaling more oxygen? So number eight, this is the liver. So the lactic acid is oxidized in the liver. Lactic acid is oxidized in the liver to produce carbon dioxide, H2O, and energy. Okay, can you see this? And in this case, number nine, okay, because just now we owe the muscle. We owe the muscle oxygen, so oxygen debt, right? So now we pay back, we inhale more oxygen to pay the debt. So number nine, in this case, oxygen debt is repaid. Okay, done. So there are nine okay, steps, you can't see because there is a, okay. Okay, I repeat, there are three stages. For each stages, there are three steps, three times three. Remember this three times three method. First stage is why there is an anaerobic respiration. Okay, these are the reasons. One, two, three. Second stage, 
During anaerobic respiration, what happens? In complete breakdown of glucose, okay, production of energy and lactic acid cause muscle cramp. And the third stage is during recovery. Inhale more oxygen and the oxidized lactic acid is oxidized in the liver and now the oxygen debt is repaid because initially we owe the muscle oxygen. Now we pay back the oxygen by inhaling more oxygen. Okay, so this is what I want you to learn from drawing the diagram. Okay, so during this lesson, okay, for this lesson, input is important, but I want you to have some output. You need to draw the diagram. Okay, I give you another 10 seconds, then I'll proceed to another part. Okay, can I erase this diagram? Okay, actually, you can repay, I replay, refine this video, you can watch again. Okay, so. Number one, okay, during vigorous activity, and you must know the situation, this is the vigorous activity. The rate of oxygen supply okay, is lower than that of the rate of oxygen used by the muscle cell. Okay, now the next one. Now, the muscle is in the state of oxygen deficiency. Okay, so an oxygen that is incurred. Okay. And now the muscle cell carry out an aerobic respiration. And the glucose will be oxidized partially or incompletely to produce lactic acid. And 150 kilojoule of energy is produced, which is also equivalent to two ATPs. Okay? And now, because of lactic production of lactic acid, accumulation of lactic acid in the muscle cell can cause muscle cramp. Okay, so now in order to remove the lactic acid during the recovery state, a person inhales more oxygen. And now the lactic acid is oxidized in the liver and this is the liver. Okay, boys, uh, in last time, okay, during the chapter two, we studied about the function of liver is for the detoxification of drugs. And therefore, the liver cell contains a lot of what smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So actually, the function of the liver, okay, there are a lot of functions in the liver. Other than the detoxification, detoxification of drugs, the liver also carry out this oxidation of lactic acid. Okay, and last one. Okay, so before the end of the lesson, I'm going to draw a graph for you to represent okay, the oxygen depth and the situation when the oxygen depth is repaid. Okay. At the same time, I want you to refer to your textbook. If you have textbook with you, boys, if you have textbook with you, please turn to your paid textbook uh, or chapter seven, chapter seven. Okay, chapter seven, there is a graph. I forget which page because I do not have the textbook with me right now. Okay, so please refer to your textbook at the same time. So that is the graph you need to know. So this graph, which is the volume of oxygen intake, versus time. Okay, please check this graph. Okay, volume of oxygen intake versus time. Okay, I will explain, I will explain this graph with you. Please turn to page 119. 119. Okay, page 119. So page 119, there is a graph of volume of oxygen intake versus time okay let's see so during the resting okay the resting state resting state which means there is no activity no vigorous activity 
So the volume of oxygen intake is constant. Okay. So let's say, and now if we carry out an aerobic rest, okay, let's say if during the vigorous activity, the muscle cell needs more oxygen, right? Okay. So we need this is the should should be the oxygen intake volume of oxygen intake increases okay as we carry out as we carry out vigorous activity as we carry out intense activity as we carry out exercises as we are playing sports so the volume of oxygen intake increases okay. so before proceeding i like to explain these two stages so this horizontal line constant which means this is in a resting state Okay, resting state. When during the during a vigorous activity, the volume of oxygen intake increases, which means starting from this point, from the end. So this is during exercise. Actually, we need this amount of oxygen. We need this amount of oxygen okay so next after exercise there is a recovery state so the volume of oxygen intake decreases we don't need to take so much of oxygen so decreases okay so let's see from this peak to this point, this is during a recovery state, which means you are inhaling more oxygen for recovery. And this horizontal line is after recovery, which is the resting state, which means you do not do any vigorous activity. Okay, so according to this curve, this is the amount of oxygen we need Okay, during the exercise. And this is the amount of oxygen during the recovery state. Okay. However, because of the oxygen supply is less than the oxygen used by the uh, muscle. And therefore, this region, this region, sorry, I will use a different color to represent this region. Okay, this orange color. Okay, can you see this region? Okay, refer to page 119 of the textbook. Okay, so this region is known as the oxygen depth. Or oxygen deficit oxygen depth or oxygen deficit which means we owe the muscle this amount of oxygen we owe them this amount of oxygen and during recovery during recovery we need to pay back the oxygen debt okay we owe people money now we need to pay back so this region, this is the amount of energy has to be paid back. And we call this as, I use the purple color one. Hopefully you can see the color difference. Huh? So in this state, oxygen that is repaid. Because we inhale more oxygen in this state to repay them, to pay back the debt we owe initially. Okay, so this explains the graph of volume of oxygen intake over time. Okay, you can refer to your textbook, page 119. Okay, so at the end of this lesson, I'm going to introduce, okay, clear? Okay, I give you another two minutes. Okay, sorry, I give you another 20 seconds okay, to interpret this graph. Okay.
So this is the point. This horizontal line represents the resting resting state, which means the intake of volume, the ox, volume of oxygen intake is constant. But in the state of exercise, we need more oxygen, so volume of oxygen increases. Recovery, we no need to use so much of oxygen decrease, and this is resting state. Okay, and this region is the total oxygen we owe the muscle, so we call this as oxygen depth. Total amount of oxygen O, okay, oxygen depth, 千多少, 千多少, oxygen, 千多少. and this is to repay because we inhale more oxygen in this case. Okay, so now I'm going to erase this diagram in 10 seconds. Please copy down. Okay. So at the end of this lesson, I want to introduce a kind of exercise which involves the anaerobic respiration. Okay, usually when we do exercise okay, at home, okay, in your school during your PJ, it will be the aerobic rest, aerobic exercise. Okay, but now I'm going to introduce another exercise which is known as the anaerobic exercise, which is known as the HIIT. Do you ever listen to this term H I I T. So H I I T here represents the high intensity. H I I T. Okay. H I I T here means the high intensity interval training. High intensity interval training. Okay. So by this training, it's very efficient if you want to uh cut down your calories. Okay, or to build up the muscle, you can go try this method. Okay, so it's very easy. You can do it at home. This is an indoor activity without going out. So I will share a video regarding to this HIIT. You can just follow and do it at home. Okay, so the step is like that. You need to do 40 seconds. Okay, 40 seconds of a high intense, high intense. Not high, high intense interval training, uh, high intense activity. Which means do this activity can make you very tired one. Okay, 40 seconds. And then you take 50 second break or 50 second recovery. So keep doing this 40 seconds plus 50 seconds times 8 sets. Which means you do this. Eight different positions, eight different positions. Okay, why we call this as a HIIT? So within this 40 seconds, okay, because of due to the high intense activity, so your muscle cell, your muscle cell now are carrying out the anaerobic respiration. So in, in this 50 seconds during the recovery, you will inhale more oxygen to oxidize the lactic acid okay so by this HIIT okay you this can reduce tiredness okay because let's say if you do an activity okay let's say you go for a long run okay you go for a practice sports practice for one hour without resting so after an hour after an hour you feel very tired but if you follow this HIIT 40 seconds of anaerobic respiration and you rest 50 seconds after that immediately. The purpose is to remove the uh, lactic acid. Okay, so you will not feel tired in the second steps, in the second steps. So this is known as the HIIT. You can do it at home without going out. Okay, so at the end of this lesson, I'd like to make a summary recap regarding to the content. Okay, hopefully you can stay with me for another five seconds. Do not leave. Okay, so for our topics today, the first one I'm going to introduce, okay, yeah, I'm not, not going, I have already introduced, okay, the first one, which is the type of respiration, okay, so we have the external and the internal or also known as cellular respiration, and for internal respiration can be divided into two types, Okay, we have the aerobic respiration and the anaerobic respiration. 
So for anaerobic respiration, can be divided into two types. Okay, the alcohol fermentation and the lactic acid fermentation. For aerobic, we have oxidation, we have glycolysis, okay, and also oxidation of pyruvate. And next, I also introduce some uses of energy. Why do we need energy? Okay, and the second slot. Okay, I talk about the aerobic respiration okay it can be divided into two stages okay the first one which is known as the glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm and two ATPs are yielded okay whereas the second stage which is known as the oxidation of pyruvate okay next one the third slot, I talk about the anaerobic respiration. And there are two types. The first one, which is the alcohol fermentation. So for alcohol fermentation, the yeast cell carry out alcohol fermentation. Okay. And then the penny plants out undergo the alcohol fermentation, as well as the lactic acid fermentation, lactobacillus, and the muscle cell. Okay, so these are the summary regarding to our topics today. So when you do revision at home, when you study once again, please follow this one, two, three. Okay, so guys, for today's lesson, I will stop here. Okay, and please, uh, tomorrow please check the Google Classroom, Google Classroom, because I will uh, give you an assign a very simple quiz, a very very simple quiz regarding to today's topic. And for next week, next lesson, and we have no live classroom, no live learning for next week. It's, but I will give you some videos for your own research, doing some own research at home. Okay, so if any question, please give me a comment and I will answer your question regarding to today's topic. Okay, come on, I give you some time to give to answer questions. Anyone have questions? Okay, since there is no question, okay, if you are, if you can, you can ask questions, okay, uh, give me a press, ask question uh, through the private message me in Messenger, bus at any method will do. Okay, so here comes the end of this lesson and wish everyone have a good day. Okay, stay safe and goodbye class. Thank you class. And last but not least, please like this video as a support, as a compliment to Mr. Tan for showing my crew cut. Okay, if you think that you want to accept this crew cut challenge, so please go ahead. Okay, 4S1, 4S6, we are all Superman. Okay, please follow me and accept this crew cut challenge. Okay, so class time, monitor. We are the monitors. Goodbye class, thank you class. Okay, goodbye class. Thank you class. See you. Uh, next week we have no live, no live, uh, no live classroom. Uh, no live classroom. So I will send you the task in Google Classroom. Okay, goodbye. And don't forget to like this video. Okay, see you. Take care.